glad you could join me to finish out the income overview segment. Remember, this is an overview. If you need in-depth clarification on any of these segments, that is the overview segments, be sure to attend one of the live or recorded training sessions. So then, let's continue with the tax return income items. I've already addressed wages, interest, dividends, retirement income, Social Security, capital gains in the previous segment. So that takes us down to line eight, other income from Schedule 1. Before going to Schedule 1, let's take a peek back at the Form 13614C to identify the types of income that could be reflected on the Schedule 1. Taking another look at the Form 13614C Intake Interview and Quality Review Sheet, the highlighted areas are what we'll cover in this part. My hope is that you're beginning to make the connections and discover how critical it is to review the intake sheet, gather all source documents before beginning any input into the tax layer software. Now, here on line six, we find the alimony. Line seven, self-employment income. Line eight, cash for any work performed not reported on a W-2 or 1099. And then the income catch-all line, which would be line 15. On the screen, you will see, once again, the schedule one. We've only been using this relatively new schedule for about three years. Although the slide shows a draft, I'm pretty sure this is what it will look like in its final version. However, we will not be deterred in this overview. As you can see, Schedule 1 has space for both additional income, which we'll discuss now, as well as adjustments to income. So what does that tell you? You will see this schedule again when we get to the Adjustment Overview section. For now, let's concentrate on the Additional Income section. Line 1 is for taxable refunds, credits, offsets of state and local income taxes. As it indicates, this line is primarily dealing with refunds from the state. Line 2 deals with al alimony received. If you can recall from the Income Quick Reference Guide from Publication 4012-D1, alimony is one of the taxable income items. If the taxpayer receives alimony from an ex-spouse, it needs to be included in income. Alimony has its own line on the income page in TaxLayer software, so look for it if the taxpayer has received alimony. Allow me to throw a tidbit of information here regarding alimony. Not only is alimony taxable to the receiver, alimony paid can be used as an adjustment to income by the one paying it, meaning the payer gets to reduce their income by the alimony paid as long as the payer can furnish the social security number of the receiver. I'll circle back to that when we get to the adjustment section. Just know that alimony represents taxable income. No more explanation is required here. A divorce or separation date might be required on line 2B. You'll need to consult the 1040 instructions to see what that's all about. I'll let you do that research on your own. Line 3, business income or loss. Business income is all income earned while being self-employed. Can a taxpayer have both W-2 income and self-employed or business income? Yes. Consider this. A taxpayer works 9 to 5 on a daytime job, Monday through Friday. However, on the weekend, he or she operates a lawn service, mowing lawns, cleaning up the landscape, cutting down dead tree limbs, putting out the fall flowers, cleaning up the gut cleaning out the gutters, etc., etc. I think I got a little bit carried away. That sounds sort of personal, right? Since the taxpayer is working for him or herself, that work is considered self-employment or business income. 
For our example, or from our example, the taxpayer could work for himself or he could be employed as a contract laborer by a landscaping company. The landscaping company calls him or her when they are needed. My whole point is that the taxpayer is not considered an employee for employment tax purposes, but is considered self-employed. Another look at a portion of the Form 13614C dropped to lines 7 and 8. The taxpayer has answered yes to the self-employment question. So, my question to the taxpayer is, did you receive a statement from whomever paid you, such as a Form 1099 miscellaneous or a Form 1099 NEC? If he did, then I would receive that source document and use it for input into the TaxSlayer software. If the taxpayer states that he is paid in cash or checks and he maintains his own record of income and expenses, then I would need to receive that written record and put it to the side for using when I began the input process. You will notice on line seven, the self-employment income could come from the 1099 miscellaneous or the 1099 NEC or cash. Whichever method is used, there needs to be documentation of income and expenses. Now let's take a look at the 1099 miscellaneous and the Form 1099 NEC. This slide shows both Form 1099 miscellaneous and Form 1099 NEC. NEC or non-employee compensation form is what the payer of services should be providing to the contract labor taxpayer. However, this Form 1099 NEC is new for 2020. So payers might give the taxpayer Form 1099 miscellaneous because that's what the payers have been accustomed to providing. Form 1099 NEC is used specifically for self-employed or contract laborers, whereas the Form 1099 miscellaneous can be used for a variety of other payments to a taxpayer. You will need to read each of these forms carefully before beginning your input into TaxLayer software. Both forms are used to report income to a payee in excess of $600. If the, pay, if the taxpayer was paid $600 or less, the taxpayer may not receive from the payer either of these forms. However, the income still needs to be reported on the taxpayer's tax return. No matter what, the taxpayer is required to maintain his or her own records, that is the self-employment records or documentation of income and expenses. Taxpayer records for VITA purposes will need to meet certain expectations. Accounting methods would need to be cash only for VITA. There can be no inventory or cost of goods sold, no employees, no business use of the home or depreciation. The records need to show total income received, total itemized list of expenses, and whether or not a personal vehicle was used to earn the self-employment income. TaxLayer captures all the data input and transfers it to the form 1040 Schedule C, Profit and Loss from Business, which then transfers to Schedule 1, Line 3. Let me just show you what the 1040 Schedule C looks like. This is the actual Form 1040 Schedule C, Profit or Loss from Business. A through E deals with the Entity Information section, which is the name, the address, etc., etc., F through J deals with cash method of accounting along with some other questions. Part one is the income section. Here you include both cash income as well as income from Forms 1099 Miscellaneous and from Form 1099 NEC. Part two is the expense section. Notice some of the eligible expenses. 
taxpayers will need to have written documentation of the monies spent for those eligible expenses. Generally, if the taxpayer is keeping their own records, they will have those expenses already itemized and totaled for the tax preparer, which is the preferred method. Notice part two, line nine, car and truck expenses. That information is brought forward from page two of Schedule C, part four. Let's take a look at it just now. The data for line nine from the previous slide derives its information or data from part four. As you can see, part four is asking for vehicle information only if the vehicle was used in the self-employed business. The taxpayer will need to respond to all the questions in order to have a deductible expense item. Additionally, please notice part five. Here, the taxpayer can list additional expenses not covered on the page one, part two expenses. Schedule C takes into account self-employment income minus expenses. If there is a net profit of $400 or more, the taxpayer is liable or subject to self-employment tax on that net profit. Self-employment tax is the same as Social Security taxes. The self-employment tax is figured automatically in TaxLayer software. I'm about to throw you another curve, so hang in there with me. The total self-employment tax based on the net self-employment income will be shown on Schedule 4, Other Taxes Schedule. No, you haven't seen that schedule yet, but you will. One half of that amount will be deducted or adjusted on Schedule 1 in the adjustment section of the 1040 Schedule 1. Remember, Schedule 1 contains both other income as well as adjustments to income information. Adjustments reduces the income, which could result in paying less taxes. We're going to cover adjustments in the upcoming segment, so stay with me. After inputting information from the Form 1099 NEC, TaxLayer software should generate the Schedule C automatically. Form 1099 miscellaneous, if applicable, can be manually generated by the tax preparer. Once done with the Schedule C inputs, the net profit or loss will drop to Schedule 1, Line 3. Okay, so that was Line 3, Business Income or Loss. You can see that Schedule C is required, which will automatically attach to the tax return. Consult Publication 4012, pages D14 through D20 for screenshots of how to navigate business income and expenses in the tax layer software. Lines four, five, and six are all out of scope for our VITA program. However, line seven, unemployment compensation, is within scope, so let's talk about it just now. Unemployment compensation is income or benefits derived from the state workforce commission. If the taxpayer did receive unemployment compensation, they should receive the form 1099-G. As you can see, this form looks very, very similar to the other 1099s we've already covered, as well as the form W-2, which brings up a really good observation here. The tax preparer should always be certain when inputting data into the software, he or she is looking at and referencing the correct source document for the correct income type. My point here is to read the source document before beginning any input into tax layer. Form 1099-G for typical VITA taxpayers will only have data in boxes 1 and 4, which covers total unemployment received and the federal income tax withheld from that unemployment. 
We are down to line eight of schedule one, other income. Other income could include gambling, winnings, jury duty fees, rewards, notary fees, and a myriad of other types of income. The taxpayer could present to the tax preparer a printed source document or a handwritten documentation referencing this other income. The tax preparer should be asking the taxpayer where was this income derived. On the income section in tax layer, the tax preparer should navigate down to the last item on the screen titled Less Common Income. Click there and tax layer will bring up some additional income items not listed on the first screen. Read through those additional income items carefully. Once the other income is input into TaxLayer, TaxLayer identifies the other income items and drops the total income amount on line 8 of Schedule 1. Line 9 of Schedule 1 combines lines 1 through 8 of Schedule 1. Schedule 1, line 9, then drops that amount to Form 1040, line 8. Here we are, back to where we started, Form 1040, specifically line 8. Take a quick look at line 9. It totals lines 1, 2B, 3B, 4B, and 5B, 6B, 7, and line 8 from Schedule 1. We have taken care of all of the income items. Now it's time to move on to line 10, adjustments, giving us another opportunity to look at Schedule 1. See you in the adjustment section.